Next on the Center County Report, more states are changing their gun laws on college campuses. Could Penn State be next? And then, why should you vote in the upcoming election? Some distinguished speakers tell us why. The Center County Report starts now. Welcome to the Center County Report. I'm Jordan Pruitt. And I'm Gina Figali. We'll start with breaking news. A stay of execution for a killer who is set to die in Center County next week. Just over an hour ago, a judge issued a stay for the condemned murderer, Terry Williams. It comes just five days before he was set to die by lethal injection at the Rockview Prison in Belfont. The judge ruled prosecutor suppressed evidence that Williams' victim was an alleged pedophile who abused boys. Williams will now get a new sentence hearing. Investigators still aren't saying if a man arrested for setting a fire to a Belfont warehouse may be connected to the Hotel Doty fire. This week's new blaze destroyed the Mattress World warehouse on Spring Street, and police charged 22-year-old Jeffrey Karg with the arson. They believe he acted alone, and in the meantime, they still haven't released the cause of the hotel fire. But they are looking to find out if Karg may have been involved. Police are still searching those responsible for vandalizing the Penn State Veterans Plaza on Monday. Black tread marks most likely from a bike covered large parts of the monument's stone walls. The memorial is in honor of the university's veterans and was just dedicated on September 14th. Volunteers removed some of the marks off the walls, but some remain. The Office of Physical Plant is deciding how to remove the rest. Anyone with information is asked to call university police. If you could, would you consider carrying a gun, concealed weapon on, on a college campus? More states are changing their campus gun rules, but what about Penn State? Reporter Jeremy Kahn looked into the issue. Since 2002, there have been six deadly shootings on college campuses across the United States. Just over a month ago, three were killed near the campus of Texas A&M. And in 2007, the most deadly shooting by a single person in U.S. history on the campus of Virginia Tech. Which brings up the question of carrying weapons on college campuses. Currently, 21 states ban carrying a concealed weapon on campus. In 24 states, the decision is left to the individual college or university. Concealed weapons are allowed in five states, Colorado, Mississippi, Oregon, Utah, and Wisconsin. In Pennsylvania, the decision is up to schools whether to allow concealed weapons on campus. Here at Penn State, firearms are banned across university property. William Morsbacher, assistant chief of the Penn State Police, says it's a matter of safety. I think what we don't want to do is, is have people who are really unprepared and, and, and don't understand what they're doing with a firearm carrying them. I'm not sure that that's really in anybody's best interest. Graduate student Leopold Brunette, who is licensed to carry, agrees with Penn State's rule, but knows others who are adamantly against it. We have had pretty heated argument about that, and they said yes, because if something happens, they want to be able to defend themselves. Uh, my opinion is if you are not trained to defend yourself, to actually like, respond, it's not. Gun restrictions on campuses is currently a loaded topic and will continue to be debated by state and university legislators in the coming years. In University Park, Jeremy Kahn for the Center County Report. And what's your opinion? Should college students be allowed to carry guns on campus? Head over to our Center County Report Facebook page to voice your opinion. We'd like to hear from you. A judge hearing arguments on Pennsylvania's controversial voter ID law has until Tuesday to rule on the case. He heard testimony yesterday and suggested he may stop only a narrow part of the law. The deadline to register to vote is October 9th. The Secretary of the Commonwealth came to Penn State this week and talked to a full Hub Robinson Center about the voter ID law. In response to legislation, Penn State added expiration dates to student IDs. I do want to applaud the activities of uh, uh, your, your trustees and your college administration for leading the way and making sure that Penn Staters uh, have their voices heard in this upcoming election. For more info on the voter ID law and to see if your ID is valid for the November 6th, visit votespa.com. The Penn State community came together for this week in an election event called Why Vote. Featured speakers included Jay Paterno, Coquise Washington, and civics professor David Brinker. Paterno and Washington took similar approaches on encouraging people to get out and vote. Paterno recapped history and spoke of the struggle for many to gain the right to vote. And that's what motivates him to hit the polls. Coach Washington talked about her father's difficulties during the 1960s. I thought it was a good um, personal story from Coach Washington. Made it more relatable. I know I have a few friends I can tell that story to and make them more likely to vote. 
Washington hopes her message encouraged at least one young voter. It's important to go out and, and vote. It's important to be a part of the political process, um, not just voting, but, but be a part of the, the, the political discourse and to understand that every vote matters. This week's events is the first in many in a What's at Stake series. Some Center County schools have their work cut out for them after the release of this year's Pennsylvania School of Assessment, or PSSA, results. Three of the county's five school districts, State College, Penns Valley, and Bald Eagle, met their early year progress goals. But Beltfont and Phillipsburg Osceola districts missed progress goals and are now on warning status. Some officials blame the drop in scores on the statewide investigation into cheating on exams. They say as a result, scores fell because some of the schools this year because of the stricter security measures. Well, did you see it? The much-anticipated documentary, Why We Dance, The Story of Thon, premiered last night on WPSU-TV. Reporter Marco Ranzi spoke with the brains behind the operation about how Thon is a year-long event and not just a 46-hour dance. It's almost impossible to find a student at Penn State that doesn't know about Thon. The annual 46 straight hours of dancing is to raise money for a pediatric cancer cure. So when WPSU decided to film an hour-long documentary titled Why We Dance, The Story of Thon, the director and producer of the story, Cole Cullins, wanted to reach a national audience. We really wanted to tell the story of Thon to an audience that either doesn't know what Thon is or just knows or just thinks that Thon is just that one weekend. Collins, along with the rest of the WPSU crew, made sure the documentary conveyed how students involved with THON are busy year-round. Here inside the hub at Penn State is room 210. This is where THON overalls make key decisions to run the largest student-run philanthropy in the world. Students and admirers of THON organized watch parties when the story was released to the public last night. One of those students was Joe Lubsansky, who danced at THON last year, and is currently the Thon Logistics Chair for the Blue and White Society. They talked about the Four Diamonds families and they let them talk and tell their stories. And it kind of just reminds us what we're doing it for. You know, during Thon Weekend, we're doing it for the kids. And it's not just one event, you know, it's a year-long thing. So far, viewers like Lubsansky have said the story captures the true essence of Thon, which was what WPSU and Colin were aiming for. It's great to have the opportunity to simply share this story with people that both want to hear it and, and should hear it. It's, it's, I'm excited to just get it out and have people see how awesome Thon is. In State College, I'm Marco Ranzi for the Center County Report. The first of three canning trips will begin this weekend when Thon members hit the streets to raise money for a cure. A contagious disease is making a comeback on Penn State's campus. We have that health warning next on the Center County Report. And something is crawling its way into the Bryce Jordan Center this weekend. Find out what creepy creatures are here and how you can see them. Whooping cough has hit Penn State. University Health Services reported two confirmed cases. Both are students. They live off campus and are getting treatment. Whooping cough is a highly contagious disease that causes violent coughing, and there are also five more possible cases that were reported this week. University doctors and the State Department of Health are closely watching the situation. If you have not been immunized against the whooping cough, talk with your doctor. Mount Nittany Medical Center is expanding its surgical services in hopes of offering more options for its patients. The $36 million project will include building a 60,000-foot addition that will add new operating rooms and expand the pre-surgery care and post-surgical area. The hospital is also expanding its pain management services and moving them to a new facility. That location will also offer a walk-in lab and radio radiology services. Mount Nittany is also building a new emergency department that should be finished next spring. A new medical breakthrough has led to the discovery that could change the lives of women with breast cancer. A study confirms the existence of four main subtypes of breast cancer, including the deadliest, basal-like breast cancer. Experts found those tumors share genetic similarities with ovarian tumors, and oncologists suggest that they could potentially be treated with the same drug. The discovery moves scientists one step closer to finding drugs that work best for cancer patients based on tumor genes rather than the location in their body. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and as the whole country goes pink for the reason, Center County is doing its part. 
Reporter Loredana Abreu found out how our local community is joining the national fight against cancer. Jezebel's Boutique, a lingerie store in downtown State College, is one of the main sponsors of Bedazzle Your Bra. It's an event that's raising funds for the Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition. Tammy Miller says this is more than a fun event, even if that's the main idea. It's very important to understand that doing events like this helps raise awareness, advocacy, and of course funding that's very necessary. Here's how it works. Competitors pay $10 to have their bra display on the store's windows and $1 to vote for their favorite bra. One out of eight women is diagnosed with breast cancer and something as simple such as decorating a bra like this and making a donation contributes to the fight. Even though this is the first year for Bedazzle Your Bra, crazy and fun bras dominate the windows of this store. One of the participants proudly showed off her masterpiece and talked about supporting the cause. I was sort of recruited by a friend of mine who's organizing the competition and I have learned through her grace and her courage. She's a breast cancer survivor and I'm really inspired by her. Breast cancer can happen to anyone and the best way to fight it is early diagnosis. So October is the time to wear pink and raise awareness. In State College, I am Loredana Abreu for the Center County Report. The contest winners will be announced at Damon's Girl in State College on October 10th. The cover charge for that event is $20 per person. A new 24-hour helpline now makes social service information easily available to anyone in Center County. From emergency food needs to mental health issues, help can be found by simply dialing 211 on any phone. The Community Help Center on Beaver Avenue in State College serves 16 counties in the Center region. It's part of the long-term effort to make the National 211 service available to all of Pennsylvania. Speaking of phones, admit it, you've probably been very good at multitasking while on your phone, maybe even while driving. But this fall, the state is proposing a bill that would ban the use of cell phones and other handheld devices while driving. In March, texting while driving was banned, but it's difficult for police to tell when people are using their phones for texting. Under the new bill, people who violate it would be fined $50 and $100 if they're driving in an active school or work zone. The goal? To encourage people to use hand-free devices to make or receive calls. Center County could face higher oil prices this winter thanks to potentially bad weather. AccuWeather is predicting a higher than normal snowfall and some say that could cause oil prices to jump. That's just one factor that goes into determining the price and other value variables can include the price of oil per barrel and the condition of the economy. Higher prices, of course, can force some to look at alternative forms of heating like natural gas or coal. Yesterday, oil prices increased by almost $2 per barrel. That winter forecast is notoriously hard to nail down. Last year, you'll remember, we were so warm during the winter months, we had hardly any snow across much of the Northeast. We'll see how this year plays out. But first of all, for this weekend, it looks like we will be fairly unsettled, unfortunately. More bouts of hit and miss showers coming up for both Saturday and Sunday. The good news is, Early next week looks like it will turn more tranquil, but overnight we had some real heavy rainfall around here. If you were out and about between about 9 and midnight, you probably got soaked. Good night to stay inside perhaps and watch TV, that's what I did. Look at this, over an inch of rain in State College and Bullsburg overnight. Belfont even coming in with about three quarters of an inch of rainfall. Bullsburg already has more than five inches of rain on the month, which is above normal. So don't think we'll have too much more over the next couple of days, but again, we will have some showers to contend with over the weekend, but right now in State College, temperatures are hovering near 61 degrees, still lots of clouds around, and winds are generally light out of the westerly direction. But for this afternoon, we're heading up to about 65 degrees, within reach of normal, but slightly below. But notice the low temperature this morning, only 58 degrees. That's pretty mild. We should be dropping into the 40s this time of year, but when we have the clouds overhead at night, it tends to keep us a little bit warmer. Also, I want to point out the sunrise and the sunset here. Notice sunrise now after 7 a.m. and sunset creeping in before 7 p.m., a depressing mark that we moved get, uh, through over the past week. So coming up for the weekend again, some bouts of showers will be rotating through from the west. Right now they're heading towards New England though, so today we may actually see some breaks of sunshine in the afternoon. And tomorrow night there could be some breaks of uh, clear skies as well for the full harvest moon. But again, we'll have a lot of clouds to contend with, so 
we might not get the best view of that over the next day or so. For today, though, again, mainly cloudy skies, a few breaks of sunshine late in the day, temperatures generally in the 60s or so, but I think the rain threat is done for the day. That's the good news. For the next several days, though, there are lots of clouds for the weekend. Next shower chance really comes in late Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. And as I turn around and show you early next week, notice the sunshine returns. Temperatures stay in the 60s, but we're back into the lower 70s by Wednesday. An invasion of creepy strange bugs is coming to Center County. Don't worry, you're safe, but you might want to check them out tomorrow at the Bryce Jordan Center. Reporter Scott Gimber shows you why. There is no home football game for Penn State this weekend, but that does not mean people won't be rolling into State College. The Great Insect Fair is at the Bryce Jordan Center tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Penn State professor of entomology Michael Saunders is expecting it to be a lot of fun for the whole family. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of noise, a lot of noise, um, a lot of insects, a lot of diversity of things to do with insects. Guests of the Bryce Jordan Center tomorrow will be able to see how insects are used in basic research, how to manage honeybees, insect Olympics for the kids, a live band, a bug doctor, and even an insect deli where visitors will be able to try cooked insects. The entomology department is expecting over 11,000 people tomorrow at the Bryce Jordan Center, and those guests will be able to see insects just like these, from walking sticks, to butterflies, even to some scary spiders. Penn State graduate student Becky Heinig has been volunteering at the fair for the past two years, and she is expecting it to be a big turnout. Last year we were in the Ag Arena, and we had 11,700 plus visitors, so that's why we moved to the Bryce Jordan Center, and we're thinking it'll probably be even bigger this year. So. People are expected to be coming in from all over for the Great Insect Fair that has been going on for over 20 years. Reporting for the Center County Report, I'm Scott Gimber. The fair runs tomorrow from 10 to 4 at the Bryce Jordan Center and admission is free. Penn State football's team is on a roll, but attendance hasn't even cracked 100,000 at Beaver Stadium yet this season. That has many asking why. And newly number one ranked Penn State women's volleyball starts a major road trip. Those stories next in sports on the Center County Report. As Penn State football looks to continue its current two-game winning streak this weekend, the team's Big Ten opener against Illinois holds importance for an entirely different reason. The tension between Illinois and Penn State hits its peak tomorrow as almost exactly two months ago, Illinois head coach Tim Beckman sent assistant coaches to State College in an attempt to convince Penn State players to transfer schools following the NCAA sanctions. One Penn State player, offensive lineman Ryan Nowicki, did transfer to Illinois. However, he did so after contacting the Illinois staff before their visit to State College. Penn State players such as Michael Maudie and Michael Zordich and head coach Bill O'Brien have all been vocal about their issues with the school sending coaches to State College to convince players to transfer. When asked in an interview with ESPN this week if he would have sent coaches to Illinois had the roles been reversed, O'Brien gave a very simple and stern no. Of course, there is also a football game to be played tomorrow. Penn State will enter the game with something they have not had much of all year, depth at the running back position with the return of Bill Belton. You know, Billy's a guy that uh, has good feet, got good vision and uh, and can catch the football. So uh, it's good to have him back because it's another type of uh, change of pace type of running back. Defensive side of the ball, Penn State will look to handle two Illinois quarterbacks on the afternoon. Junior Nate Shieldhouse and Riley O'Toole are both expected to see the field, and Bill O'Brien says that game planning for both quarterbacks poses a challenge for his defense. Both guys bring two distinct styles to, to the offense, so preparing for this team is very, very difficult because – you have to almost prepare for two types of team, two types of offenses. And so our defense has got a big time challenge in front of it. As they have all year, Penn State football will be in the national television spotlight again this week as their game against the Illini will kick off at noon Eastern on ESPN and ESPN 3D. The Lions have won two home games in a row, but attendance at those games has many scratching their heads. Beaver Stadium normally boasts over 100,000 screaming fans at each game, but saw a lackluster 98,000 last week against Temple, and that was the highest attendance so far this season. And some worry that an away loss this weekend against the Fighting Illini could hurt ticket sales for the rest of the season. While attendance has been down, revenue generation hasn't slipped, according to a Bloomberg News report, and it seems the Penn State community is still joining closer together to support the Nittany Lions. 
Acting Athletic Director Dave Joyner in the same Bloomberg News report said, quote, the NCAA put a cage around us. It just seems it's just a fact. What I like to say is when somebody puts a cage around us, you have to become a cage fighter. And that's what we're doing. End quote. The next home game is next Saturday against Northwestern and it'll be homecoming. Fresh off two home victories over Nebraska and Iowa and a new number one ranking, Penn State women's volleyball is set to start their first of two four-game road trips this season. The first two matches will be tonight and tomorrow against Wisconsin and Minnesota. The Nittany Lions match up tonight in Madison. is set for 8 p.m. against the Badgers. And despite a 13-2 start, Wisconsin is unranked. And they are coming off a three set to two loss at Illinois last week. After Wisconsin, Penn State will travel to Minneapolis tomorrow to take on Minnesota, which is also at 8 p.m. The Golden Gophers cracked the top 10 this week with an 11 and 2 record on the season. This will be the first match for Penn State against new Minnesota head coach Hugh McCutcheon. McCutcheon led the Team USA women's volleyball team to a silver medal in London and led the men's Team USA volleyball team to a gold medal in Beijing. His first Big Ten home match will be quite the test as Penn State has not lost to Minneapolis since October 2002. Well, finally, Penn State Tennis is set to send six athletes to their respective All-American Championships this weekend. The competition runs from September 29th to October 7th and features the best competition from top teams across the country. Brian Wellnitz, Russell Bader, Tomas Hanslick, and Roman DeCulio will represent the Penn State men in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All four will compete in both singles and doubles. Bader will pair up with DeCulio and Hanslick will pair up with Wellnitz for their double matches. Both teams picked up wins last weekend in Virginia. And meanwhile, the women will be on the West Coast as Petri Anaskova and Chelsea Yutting travel to the Women's Championships in Pacific Palisades, California. The pair will start off the main draw for doubles competition and both will also compete in the singles competition as well. And of course, Great news for the women here as they have also been named for the fourth time in the last five years to the ITA All-Academic Squad. That'll do it for sports. Back to you at the news desk. Next on the Center County Report, learn about Mount Nittany Medical Center's green thumb and how it's helping patients. A Penn State police officer is continuing her recovery today after an accident involving her patrol bicycle and a car. Officer Jennifer Williams was flown to Altoona Regional Hospital on Tuesday after she was hit by a car along Park Avenue. The driver was not hurt in the crash and police have not cited him. The officer is expected to make a full recovery. Patients, visitors and staff at Mount Nittany Medical Center have been enjoying some organic meals at the hospital. The visionary behind the program is head chef and director of nutrition and culinary services Gary Glenn. Glenn started serving organic products at the medical center in 2005. Today, every meal is 100% organic and at least 90% made from scratch. The program is supplied by the 35 farms across the country. Ellen Morgan, health writer and communications coordinator at the hospital, says the organic products are great for the hospital's patients. Through my talking with him, that um, foods are like medicine too, um, and that they have an effect on the body and the body's ability to heal. Glenn hopes to build a small organic garden once the construction sites on the hospital are finished. That's all for the Center County Report. For more news, go to our website, centercountyreport.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Center County REP and check us out on Facebook too. Have a great day.